is my studio, and this is the new keyboard rig. Hello and welcome to my review of the Yamaha Reface DX Portable FM Synthesizer. A few notes before we begin. For most of the demo that you're going to see, I am running an auxiliary cable out of the headphone jack on the DX into the speakers of this PSR E363. These speakers are bigger, they have a little bit more bass. I will give you a sample of what the onboard speakers sound like, and it sounds okay through the onboard speakers, but they are kind of small, and if you want a good idea for how this instrument might sound just in a room someplace, it's better going through these speakers. In addition, I got this set up for one of the schools I work for, and I wanted to be able to do dual keyboard playing where I'm using this in an educational setting and I may want to be able to demonstrate some FM sounds or use some of the FM sounds that are programmed into this while at the same time using the accompaniments and so forth that go with the E363. The reason that I'm using the headphone jack for this is so that it will mute the onboard speakers, by the way. So we turn the DX on, it automatically loads to DigiCord, which is a very famous kind of 80s type of sound. I know I've got some students that like the wah-wah. There's plenty of wah-wah and kind of phasing, overlapping sounds with this that I think they're going to love. So I'm not going to go through all 32 sounds, but I want to hit some highlights. This is wobble bass. This is a monophonic sound, and if you try to hold down two notes at the same time or slide between two notes, it's going to give you a portamento sound, and that means that it's going to basically glide between the notes. A really interesting, very modern type of sound. <laughs> Here's motion pad. This is like famous for like power ballads and stuff if that's your thing, right? I gotta tell you, I can't wait to use that in the background with some other stuff. It's really hard to make motion pads sound bad. Even if I intentionally grab some dissonant notes, you're still just gonna get a great sound out of it. Legend EP, another very classic 80s type of sound. Nice. Probably my personal favorite out of the whole set is this Dyna lead. It's a monophonic sound with portamento as you move between the notes. Just some really cool effects possible here. I'll talk about it a little bit more after I let you hear just a sample of it. Just, just great. The cool thing about Dynalead is, if I play with a staccato style and basically only allow one finger to touch at a time, I get this very bright articulation.
very trumpet-like. But what this can do that a real trumpet player can do, and a lot of synthesizer sounds cannot, is that if I allow myself to play in a legato style, very smooth, maybe even don't pick up one finger until the next has started to play, it takes all the articulation away and I get a constant slur. Just so cool. And if you ever need an incentive to practice, practicing this so that you get your finger movements exactly right to get the articulation you want is a real payoff for actually learning the music and not trying to fumble quickly because that's the one drawback with Dyna Lead. It may articulate when you don't want it to. Oh, every reviewer has shown this. I guess I've got to too. Just in case you were thinking about Taco Bell for any reason, and you know the old commercials? Maybe. Or was it an octave down? One or the other, but you get the idea. There's an octave switch here that lets me control the range of the instrument. Um, it's particularly helpful with basses. You can maybe drop it a little bit and just get a bit more thickness out of it. So let's see if there's anything else. Here's like just some strange noise effects like buzz siren. I don't know exactly what you'd use that for, but it's kind of cool. Bit tune. This is. I guess bit tune was one that they added for like chunky modern electronica stuff. There's this whole movement of like music that sounds like it could have come from like an SNES. I think that's partly what that's on there for. Beep bass. This is another one that has that glide effect thing going on. Very cool. This is called Begin Sweep, and it's like got got like a phase effect that's running through it. Almost like it changes the cutoff frequency or something. Wood electric piano, another famous 80s sound. And that right there probably reveals the one kind of drawback that I feel like the DX has, which is I don't feel like the voices are matched in apparent dynamic level super well. One sound, because it's got a lot of different harmonic content elements colliding in it, might seem very, very loud, and then a sound that's more spare and open might seem to be really, really quiet. It's easy to use the volume knob up here to adjust it, even running into another set of speakers. I feel like it's not really interfering with my performance but it does take time and practice and kind of a familiarity with the sounds. Doing this in a live performance, we'll just kind of have to see how it goes as far as needing to adjust that volume. This is Unilead. It displays one of the strong points I feel like these voices have for having monophonic leads is that you can sort of have one pitch that you're playing and another sort of pedal point that it keeps jumping to. It 
makes me sound like I'm playing faster than I am. <laughs> It's attack mace, it speaks for itself, I'll let it speak for itself. Oh, cloud pad, this is a good one. There's 32 sounds, by the way. A lot of people say this marimba doesn't sound like a marimba, but it's still one of those classic 80s sounds. Cheese organ is the one I find myself going to the most. definitely got very much of like a traditional pipe organ sound, but also something sort of ethereal about it. FM brass. Warm pad. Future bell. Glass harp. There really was an instrument that you filled glasses of water and then you rubbed your finger along the side of the glass and it sung out like that. This actually is a fairly good representation of that instrument. I don't think a lot of people realize that this is actually supposed to sound like a real instrument. And I'm sure most of the time when you hear it on the radio or you hear it in a movie that it's one of these DXs from some point in history playing it, this is just the newest in a line of DXs that has been around for a while. But nonetheless, it's a cool sound. That brings us through all the sounds I'm going to show you today. I'm going to reposition the camera and talk just a little bit about how to use the synthesizer on this. Okay, so hopefully what we're going to accomplish here is that this angle is good enough that you can kind of see the screen and see what I'm doing. I'm going to start with the warm pad. You scroll through a bank of sounds to find the one that you want. I do find myself hunting around a little bit as I've used it longer, but at least it makes sense. Here it is. We can take it up an octave, down a couple octaves. Have a harsh sound at that point. So the way that FM synthesis works essentially is that there are interfering sine waves and we can control that interference and be able to make all kinds of sounds that are able to change and shape and so forth. So each of the digital sine wave generators that exist in this thing is called an operator and there were four of them. The famous DX7 had six of them and this one has four, but the reason that they chose four is because then it's much, much easier to manipulate these sliders. It's easier to actually make up your own tones with than it was with 
the DX7. I'm going to start with what's the most obvious one probably, and that's the feedback control. What this allows us to do automatically is to mix together feeding back a sine wave into itself until the interference makes it into either a saw or a square. If you see nothing like it is here on this first operator, that's a sine wave and it says zero. If you get it all the way up, you get a saw. If you get it all the way down, you have a square. So here's me playing an F chord with it the way it normally comes from the factory. Now what I'm going to do is take this third operator and I'm just going to put my finger over this touch sensitive slider and slowly change that operator to being a square. Hopefully you heard that change. This can get deep. You can go crazy. One of the things I like to do is to get multiple fingers up here at the same time and just do weird, awesome shapes. I mean, you can go crazy with this, and it's touch sensitive. You're doing FM synthesis in real time. Pretty amazing. Levels, another fun one. It controls the amplitude, which ordinarily would be like the loudness, of each of the four waves that we're mixing together. And you can change things up like crazy just by changing the amplitude level of those waves. have frequency and frequency is where it can get really weird because we can actually change the frequency or the pitch of the different waves as they interfere with each other. This is really cool sound I've ended up with and now let's make it crazy. Yep, all the band directors out there are watching this video going, what was he thinking letting kids have access to a thing like that? Lastly, we have the algorithm, and that's a control that determines the order the waves are mixed in. On number 12, all the waves are of equal priority. But we can change it so that they're in different orders of mixing together.
I'm not holding out a sustain pedal. That, that voice just has that much sustain after what I did to it. But we can go through and change the algorithm and change the way in which the different waves are combined. A lot, a lot of fun. So moving on to these edit controls, we can actually go in then and edit the operators individually, making some changes to them. So this, for example, is to detune one of the oscillators. We can do this. Change the tuning of one of them. so on. So I'm holding out a chord here on cheese organ. I'm going to go to the feedback level and you can see they're all set to different amounts of sawtooth. The squares indicate the operators that are the ones that you hear and then the circles indicate the modulators which means waves that you're not directly hearing only waves that are being allowed to interfere with let's go ahead and morph this sound a little bit we also have an lfo an lfo is a low frequency oscillator just another way to change the sound Boy, in this wild stuff. So no doubt, all my band director friends are probably thinking, what is he thinking to give his students access to something that can make such crazy wild noises? The truth is, and the biggest element of review that I have to say about the DX is, it's very deep and it can take a while to learn, but it is really hard to make this thing sound bad. No matter what you do to it, it seems like you're always getting some kind of sound that at least sparks an idea. I think that's probably why the original was so popular, and that's the reason why I chose to get the Reface DX for 
my students. Hope you enjoyed.